In a previous video, we have talked about the importance of not only knowing forces and moments on a structure or a machine, but also what material they are made of, the geometry of the structures, as well as the type and intensity of the loading. And all of these are important things to keep in mind when designing anything. Okay, so the simplest way to really get started learning about the stresses and strain is to look at a very simple loading condition on a very simple kind of geometry. So we'll start with a cylindrical piece and the cylindrical piece could be made of a ductile material, a material that deforms quite a bit before it fractures, before it fails, or it could be made out of uh, a brittle material like a piece of chalk that does not have any plastic deformation and fails almost instantaneously by fracture. So let's say the two ends of this cylindrical piece are applied tension. Okay, so you're essentially pulling it in two different directions. So even though you could be applying this force of tension at the two ends that might look like force is concentrated at just one point, in reality, this force is experienced by every cross section of this material. So if you make a cut over here, let's say, the entire cross sectional area over here is going to experience this force of tension. So if I draw a free body diagram, let's say if I draw a free body diagram of just this part from here to here, okay so see, let's see what happens so i have this end and then i have this end so i have the tension t now if i want this piece to be in equilibrium then i know the tension here should also be t now this tension t is actually experienced by this entire cross section over here it is kind of distributed all over this surface area so the intensity of this force is defined as t divided by the cross sectional area so if let's say we know the diameter of this cylindrical piece, then the area is given as pi d squared over four. Intensity over here is T over A, which just has the same unit as the pressure actually, because pressure is defined as the force over area, is called normal stress sigma. This is called normal stress. The reason it's called normal stress is because the direction of this stress is in the direction normal to this cross section. So sigma is perpendicular or normal to the cross sectional area. Now when you apply a normal stress coming from this normal coming from this tensile force over here, if the material is ductile to some extent, it's going to deform, which means it's going to elongate. So there could be an elongation of this material. So let's say the original length of this was given as L, then after a while, maybe the length is L plus delta L. So there is an elongation by amount delta L. The relative elongation delta L over the original length is defined a quantity called strain. This is called strain and is given by Greek symbol epsilon. So epsilon is defined as relative elongation and is called strain. This is strain comes about because there are normal stresses. There is a elongation in the longitudinal direction, which means that if it elongates, then it has to contract in the transverse direction. So in the transverse direction, there could be contraction. So if the original diameter was D, then it could go from D to D minus delta D. So then in that case, the change in the transverse direction is delta D. So delta D and delta L are kind of related to each other by a quantity called Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio. And it's written as nu, which is given as negative delta D over D in the numerator divided by delta L over L. And the negative sign over here basically indicates that if delta L is positive, which will be the case if something was elongated, then delta D would have to be negative and vice versa. So in, this, in the other words, if let's say instead of applying tension at two ends, you applied compression. So we take our same cylindrical specimen and I apply 
the force of compression. And I'm using a different symbol over here instead of T because T is usually reserved for the tension. Then in this case, the normal stress is still F over A because at any cross section is the same stress that's being experienced because at every cross section the force is F and the cross section area is A. So the sigma is still F over A. The epsilon is still delta L over L. So in this case, delta L would be actually negative because if original length is L, then after a while, it might reduce to, let's say, L minus delta L. So the differential change is actually delta L. So epsilon is still delta L over L. And we can find what the increase in diameter would be. So in this case, because it's contracting, there would be an increase in the transfer direction. So if the diameter, original diameter was D, it might become D plus delta D. So if I want to find, let's say, delta D, because I know my delta L, I can get that from Poisson's ratio. So Poisson's ratio is minus delta D over D divided by delta L over L. In this case, delta L would be negative, And as a result, delta D would be positive. For most of the material, the Poisson ratio is is about 0.3 to 0.35. For most of the material, we write it as simply 0.3.